Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered, I'm Joe. In this video, we will be taking a look at the Aachen game in Cities of the Dam. This is Against the Odds, issue number 60. And this is the second of the two games in there that I'm playing. I already played Casino, so if you would like to see that game, it's already up on the channel. But this is the first part of pr probably two of the game Aachen. Now, if you are familiar with the games Stalingrad, Advance to the Volga, or Manila, Streets of Fire from Revolution Games, designed by Michael Ranella and Take Game Designs, this is the same system, but it's being used here by Mr. Ranella to uh, demonstrate the, uh, or to simulate, rather, the attack of uh, the city of Aachen in Germany. And so this is, um, like I said, it's a familiar system if you've played either of those other two games, which I have, and I, I enjoy this system. It's very straightforward, not overly complicated, but it is a tough nut to crack. So this is a solitaire by design game. So you're basically playing against these counters here that are spread out on the map. So this is the city of Aachen. We have two American areas already controlled here. And the, the object is to conquer as many of the rest of the board as possible. You have nine turns in which to do so. We're running from October uh, 13th. This would be 1944. October 13th, 1944 through October 21st, 1944. We get rec uh, reinforcements on turns two, three, five, and seven. Your air, you have four different levels of support you can uh, purchase with supply points, and we'll get to that in a minute. So you would have air support, engineering support, artillery support, and armor support. So those all start at zero. So this is kind of your morale and uh, points track, I guess, for as far as American support. So the Germans start with a morale of 19. As they lose, it will go down. As they do good things, it will go back up. Uh, potentially, it could crash. Uh, there are some optional rules that, that I'll talk about. I may or may not use them, but um, let's get underway. So this is I want to keep this as, as snappy as possible because I have a tendency to uh, talk too much. So let's get right, to, right down to business here. So the first thing in our sequence of play is the dawn phase. So typically, on any turn but the first... We would have reinforcements first, but since this is turn one, we do not have to worry about reinforcements or dealing with uh, leader morale, uh, mortality, rather. So all of these units, you can probably, well, hopefully you can see, but here we have a leader. His name is Butts, or bot Bots, I guess. <laughs> bots. Um, bots. And I know there are people whose name, who probably do have the last name of Butts. But anyway, his last name's Bots, so he is in charge uh, of the three one here and they can be killed uh, in combat because basically you have um, you can move of course and then as you move into areas you will um, flip this this over and find out what kind of defender is there now another thing you may notice is that this one is a circle because this is a suburban area then this one here is a square, which is an urban area. And then this one here, this one is actually designates a fortress. So, and you can see here Hotel Quellenhof, and it's got the symbol on there that tells you the, uh, the type of, of terrain that that is. So once we've done the reinforcements and the leader mortality, which we do not have to worry about, as I said, because it's turn one, we go to the random event phase. So you use three dice in this, 3d6. You have to supply your own. This is a magazine game. It does not come with dice. But I'm sure most of us have plenty of dice lying around. So on the back of our rule book, which is embedded in the magazine, alongside the uh, rules for casino, this is our game's tables for this, and you can see right here is random events. So you're going to roll 3d6, and depending on what the value is, something will happen. 
Random events really throw a monkey wrench into your best laid plans. So this is a uh, mechanism that I both enjoy and dread as I'm playing. So we'll roll our three dice and <laughs> look at that. We rolled an 18, which is the first SS Panzer Corps breakthrough. Um, if it was rolled on turn eight or nine, you would treat it as none. So we get no supply die roll and no attacks this turn. So that was the quickest turn in gaming history as it's now over, basically, <laughs> um, because nothing has happened. So there is no uh, movement. There is no combat. There's nothing to do in the end phase. So we have to just move on to turn two. Now in turn two, we do get a reinforcement. So the player receives reinforcements four times during the game, as I mentioned, turns two and three, we get an M12 self-propelled artillery, and we can place that in any area containing an American infantry unit or in one of the setup hexes or boxes, I guess. Setup areas. I, I, I can see area and read it as hex because that's just how it is in my head. Um, so we get the... Uh, M M12A, and you can see the six on there is its combat strength. So we're going to put that on. And on the other side, I didn't show you this, but you can see it says spent. So basically, once a unit has done something, they they get flipped to their spent area, and that's how you can tra keep track of who's done st something. So both of these are identical in terms of what they have, I guess. So we'll just put it here in uh, Goot Rut, right there, Goot Rut. And we'll move on. Again, we don't have a more, uh, mortality. So let's roll for an event again. And let's hopefully not get an 18. And we get a 5, a 4, and a 3. That would be 12. So we look at our chart. And 12 is rain. Air support prohibited. Movement factor of all American units reduced to 4. Normally it's 6. So it's reduced to 4. So if we're going to get that right now, then it's probably a good time to do so. We have our unit from our random event. Next up is the supply roll. So this is the same kind of thing. You roll three dice to see how what kind of supply you get. So here's our sequence of play, right, right here. The dawn phase, the random event phase, supply, combat, end. Okay, so we're going to roll here. And we got a three, <laughs> a three, four, five again, which we, a uh, little quick math, that's a 12. So we get 12 supply points. Now you purchase things with supply. We can't buy air support because we can't use it. But you can see we've got artillery support cost one and its effect is it gives a plus one to the American attack value. Engineers cost two and give you two. Armor costs three and give you three. So that's pretty straightforward. The air support would remove one D6 from the Germans defense roll. Uh, we can't use that obviously. And then when you have units that end up in the uh, out of action box, which is right here. They can be brought back on the board by spending supply points. So, so we'll give ourselves two armor support. That costs us six. We'll give ourselves two engineer points as well and two artillery. So that's gonna be a total of 12 because it's six plus four plus two and our air support of course stays at zero because we cannot spend any of that. So now we know that when we do combat, we can add uh, add strength to it. So let's uh, let's demonstrate how combat works now. So this is our. We'll make this our active area first, so we can move all the units in this area. We're going to move Fuller and uh, Smoots here. We'll send Walker and Weeks here, and we'll give them. Uh, actually, we're going to send, and we'll send them in here, I guess. Okay, so now what we have to do is, let me put a control marker in here for the Americans, first of all. We know we control it, but I'll put it in there anyway, just to demonstrate that's what a control marker looks like. Let's flip this guy over and see what we got here. So now you've got a six and barrage, okay? So that is the value of the, and once they're revealed, they stay revealed. Now, the number here, two, that's the movement cost to get in there, and it basically ramps up. So you get a two for a uh, suburban, a three for an urban, and a four movement cost for a fortress. And we have four movement points. Okay, so we're going to resolve our combat here. So we've got, you have to designate a lead unit. 
So uh, we'll we'll let uh, we'll let our gun be the lead unit since it has the highest attack value. So that's the lead unit. It gives us a six, and then we get one each for these two, seven, eight. Plus we're going to assign one engineering support, so that gives us a nine. We roll two dice, two d six, and we got not a great roll is six. So six plus uh, nine is fifteen. Now the Germans have a six. Now you also see on there it says barrage. So if we go back and refer to our magazine again in our uh, player aid chart here, you can see the defense strategies that the Germans can employ. And barrage says the American player must either place one attacking infantry or armor unit in the out of action box prior to combat resolution. American player's choice, or flip all attacking units spent and retreat. So I'm going to take one of my infantry units and put them out of action. Um, and so we'll put F in there. You know what? I just realized that I have leaders in here, so that would give me two more because they're with their unit. So that would actually give me two more points, so I would have 17. So we'll just keep that in mind. But we did lose one of our units because we lost our one of our infantry units. So that leaves us with 16. So the Germans have six. So they need a really good roll here to, uh, to win. So let's see. They get a nine. So nine plus six is 15, which means we win by two. So if your attack total is greater than your defense total, the American attack has achieved a success. All of the attacking units are flipped to the spent side. The German units eliminated and removed from the map. Decrease German morale minus one if a suburban or urban area minus two if fortified. This is a suburban area. So he goes away. These guys all get flipped to spent. And that's our first attack. Now we'll resolve this one. We do the same thing. We flip him over. It's another barrage. So, um, I think in this case, I'm just going to flip these guys to spent so I don't have to worry about having two infantry units that I have to buy back. Okay, so that finishes this area, and now we'll go to this area. Let me get my American control marker out. So, what I was going to do here is let's send, let's do this urban area. So, we're going to send uh, bots and company, uh, company I, Natchi, and company M in here. And then we'll send uh, Chaplin and L here, and Corwell and, three, and uh, K here. All right, so now we roll, um, we flip our German. Sniper. So sniper is some, obviously we've only seen barrage so far. So what does sniper mean? So we look here again. Sniper, place one leader in the out of action box after combat re resolution. Player's choice if more than one leader is present. If we did not have a leader, it would be an ambush instead, which is a different type of defense. And we'll likely see that, so I'm not going to go into it right now. So they have a six, and let's put uh, Nachi here in the out of action. So that's going to cost us a point. We'll let uh, bots company I be the lead unit. So that's a four, five, six for the Americans. We're going to give them an armor support. So that bumps it to a nine. And we'll roll our two dice. And we got a 10. So that is a 19 for the Americans. The Germans have a six, so they basically can't win. Oh, I'm supposed to add this. And that would have made this a tie. I'm not going to go back and undo it, but note that I just I just realized I screwed that up because you're supposed to add this number, which I did not do. So the Americans here have 19. These guys have a 9. So let's see what we get. They get a 6. So 9 plus 6 is 15. So this guy's eliminated. They take uh, this one and this one. Uh, you know what? Let's let's put this back. So I'm going to put this back, and we're going to say that that is because that would have been a tie. Let's not uh, let's not cheat, even though it was an accident. We're not going to cheat. So a stalemate here. So stalemate. If the AT equals DT, the American attack has suffered a stalemate. There's no effect on the German unit. All attacking units, including the lead unit, are flipped to spent. Retreat is not required. Um, so. 
basically there's a bloody streets segment that we'll do next turn as part of the dawn segment where we'll kind of go through and resolve this combat again. But for now, uh, these guys, this is a contested area, basically. This one, however, is not. We flip these guys over. And now we have one attack left, so I can really lay, lay it all on the line here. And I should have used it here in hindsight, but I guess it doesn't matter. Um, so let's take these guys here, and we'll let Chaplin's uh, L, Company L, be the lead. We're going to use uh, Armor, Engineer, that's four, and two Artillery would be four more. That's eight. That's kind of overkill, but um, I should have spread it out better, and I didn't. So let's flip this guy. It's Ambush. So Ambush is... Uh, all, none of these are good, <laughs> but uh, let's see what Ambush gives us here, right? Ambush, eliminate the lead attacking unit after combat. So we know that Company L is going to get eliminated. All right, but in the meantime, we're adding eight. So we've got four, five, six, seven, plus eight is 15. This is going to be a, a wipeout probably. Uh, that's 23. They have a five. They Whatever they roll, it won't matter. Um, definitely won't matter. It's a six. So that's eliminated. We get this. And then we flip all of these guys over. Like so. And, um, wait a minute. I screwed up. We're supposed to attack this one. Because there's no connection. You can only attack an adjacent... <laughs> God, I'm making mistakes left and right, man. All right, so we <laughs> are supposed to be attacking this one. Um... All right, we're going to do this. Rather than rerun the combat, we'll just swap it around. Um, we don't know what this is. You're, they're random. Um, there's extras so that you don't, you can't game it and and say, oh, I've got, I've seen four ambushes, so the next one must be a sniper or something like that. Uh, so that's the end of the turn. So you go to the end phase, and then the end phase, if you haven't won an automatic victory, which we have not. Flip all spent units back to the fresh side, advance the turn marker, and then we would uh, basically start over. So these guys are no longer spent. Now, when you lose, when the German loses, they, I forgot to uh, adjust the morale for the Germans losing. So in a stalemate, there's no change. Um, in a success for the Americans, so we had... An urban one is, is one, so that's one. This is suburban, that's also one. That's a tie, so that was nothing, and this was also one. So they're down to 16. Oh, and I was supposed to give them a plus one DRM, which actually, <laughs> going back, would make that a repulse. And a repulse, um, the lead attacking unit is eliminated so that would be this guy. So we're going to put him out. And that stays there. And then these guys would have to uh, retreat, I believe. So if you move into an unrevealed area, you have to attack. So they had to retreat. And the Germans get a, instead of losing one, they get one. So they're at 18. And they get that plus one DRM next turn as well. I don't think it would have mattered here or not there. Here or here or here in our other three attacks. So now that I've got hopefully all my mistakes out of the way, we'll move on to uh, number three. We get another, a new unit and we'll put him, um, put him here. Okay, so we have, uh, we would have a uh, bloody streets to do, but we don't because there isn't one. So we're going to roll for our random event. I thought I was doing too well. I was doing too well because I was messing it up. So we got a uh, 13. If we look at our handy dandy chart, a 13 is a rain, which we already had. So no air support again. And our movement factor is again four. Uh, did I forget to remove this? No. No, I did not. We do have a Bloody Streets. 
All right, so we'll remember that it's rain, but we do have bloody streets to do um, when we get to the combat phase. All right, okay, so we rolled our, we rolled for rain, now we'll roll for our supply points. And we got a whopping five. That's pretty pathetic, actually. So I don't think we're going to get any support this round because I did want to buy buy some of my... Uh... Oh, I need to check. I also need to check for leader depth. If a leader was placed in the out-of-action box, which there was, 1d6. So we, roll. we got a two and a two. He's killed in action, and he's out of the game. So, uh, Nachi, un unfortunately, or Nachi, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, is... He has, uh, unfortunately, lost his life in the defense of his country, so he is removed from the game. That's not great for me, but it makes it a little easier on purchasing my units back on. So, the yellow combat factor here indicates that this is an armored unit. So, they cost two. Now, I have five. And I'm going to need to spend three to get these two units back. So we're going to put this guy here. And I'm going to bring F back and put it back here with, with Weeks where it belongs. And we have two left. So I can buy, I guess, two engineer supports. No, artillery. It's artillery. So we'll buy two of those. We have two artillery support. Um... Okay, so now that we now that we've got that, we can go do our um, bloody streets here. So at the start of the combat phase, the player rolls one d six on the bloody streets table. So I'm going to roll one d six, and we got a four and a four. No effect. So we do not raise German morale, and we don't have to flip our units. To, to spent and and lose morale. We got as high as we could get without having to uh, to deal with that nonsense. So now we would move on to our uh, action rounds. So I'm going to uh, start up here, I guess, and we're going to attack this guy again. And we'll just use Company D as our lead unit. Now, with the barrage does not have an effect this time. So they have a defense of six plus the one DRM. I have to remember that. So essentially, it's a seven, is what it is. So they have four, five, six, seven themselves. So it's seven, seven, even up. And we'll roll our two D6. And the Americans get a four. So their number's an 11, which is bad. And now the Germans have to roll less than that for us to win. And they don't. They rolled an eight. So they win. So that is a repulse. So their morale goes up. We lose our lead unit. He goes in the out of action box, and all of these guys have to retreat. So they will do so. Uh, actually, no. It's it's not a mo it wasn't a mandatory attack, so they don't have to retreat. I think they they would just continue. So the attack was repulsed. I should have used artillery support in hindsight. Hindsight's twenty twenty. This case, I didn't do it, so we're just out of luck there. Okay, so that's that area taken care of. Now let's look at uh, F and G here. Weeks and Walker. Plus we've got this guy right here. So we're going to go in here again. We won't have to worry about the barrage. They're going to have a defense strength of eight. So we're going to go in there. That'll be our lead unit. G and F will come in as well. So that's going to give us five, uh, four rather, plus six is 11. They're going to have an eight. So we're at plus three right now. Uh, as I said, we have 4 plus 6 is 10. They have 8. We give, uh, oh, they have 9 because of the plus 1 for morale. We'll use one artillery to make it 11, 9. So we have a, a 2 point advantage in theory. We got a 10, so that's good. So we've got a 10. Let's see what they get. They get a 9. So we win, we win, this guy goes away, we take control of this area, these, these guys are all spent. Let's activate this guy and go to four, that's his four movement points. And I'm going to be bold and I'm going to attack with just him and use my last artillery so that we'll have an attack strength of seven. 
He's got a two here. And he gets a four fanatic. So that's good because uh, we have a seven and he has a six. So we have a, uh, well, he has a seven as well. So it's seven, seven. Fanatic defense. If the combat rolls a success, it's changed to a stalemate. So if I win, it's a stalemate. Um, ignore if it's a repulse stalemate or o over overrun. All right. So we're going to roll. We'll roll the Americans first. We got a seven. So that's a 14. So he needs to roll less than a seven for it to be a uh, st to, for it to be a success that gets changed to a stalemate. And he rolled an eight, so they just win. So this guy gets eliminated. Uh, that stays there. They get their morale point back. You can see that what I said that this game is a tough nut to crack. Right? Uh, we're three turns in, and we've been getting our butts handed to us um, pretty pretty consistently. So let's take these two guys now, and we're going to come in here again. Where his defense is only going to be a, a seven this time again, but there's no fanatic effect. So if we win, then we win. So we'll let Company K be our leader. So we have four, five, six, seven. Um, we don't have any support left, so it is seven to seven because of the DRM. So we'll roll for the Americans. So we have a 13 after our roll of six. And the Germans also roll a, uh, a six, so we're tied. So this becomes a stalemate. And the German morale cannot go up any further. And again, the result of a stalemate, everybody is uh, flipped to the spent side. And retreat is not required in cases of mandatory attack. So we have a stalemate, and we'll have a blood. We're going to have some uh, <clears throat> some bloody, bloody battle later. Did I do? Did I do that one? I don't remember now. I think I did, and I didn't flip them to spent. So let's just flip these guys to spent. I'm pretty sure I did do this. And I think that's it. Uh, oh, we didn't do these guys yet. So we have bots, and he's with companies I and M. Let's move them. Let's go. For, let's go for it. This is probably not going to work, but we'll come in here. We have a six. They have a three plus an eight. <laughs> Elite. Elite. So like I said, this is not going to work. Elite is the German side rolls three D6 instead of two. And they drop the, le the lowest result. So they still only get two, but they get to roll three. So we have a six. They have an 11. So we'll roll. Let's roll them first. I'm going to roll all three. Oh, oh, they dropped the lowest. So they only got a five. So a five plus 11 is still 16. And we have a whopping six. So I have to roll a an 11 or 12 to win this to win this combat. And we rolled a seven. So we did not do it. We are we are uh, repulsed. Their morale cannot go up. We have to lose our lead unit. And I didn't designate one. We're going to take M. And then bots and his, his guy here will retreat. We don't have to. Um, oh, I think we do have to, actually. But we know we got a whopping eight elite unit sitting there in uh, Adelbert Steinweg there. So that is the end of that turn. Yes, and we move to turn four. So again, we go to our reinforcement phase. There is no re there. I should there are no reinforcements this turn. Uh, leader mortality. We do not have a leader in the box, so we don't have to worry about that. Random event phase, and we got a low number this time six. And a six is Aachen Defender's counterattack. Supply die roll halved, rounded down this turn. Okay. Speaking of the supply roll, we're going to do that right now. And <laughs> we're going to get three because we have a six that gets halved. So with a three, I'm going to buy out, uh, I guess I'll buy out my two infantry units. So we'll put M... Uh, we'll put M here, and we'll put O. Is this O? Is Fuller O? 
Yes. Okay. So we'll put them there. That way he can rejoin his, his comrades there. And that leaves me with two. And I have to leave my... So again, we'll buy two artillery support for two points. And we now go to our combat phase. So we do have bloody streets to deal with. So we're going to roll 1d6. And look at that. We got a 6. So when you roll for bloody streets and you get a 6, that means... Bad things. Flip the American units to their spent side and raise German morale by one. Well, we don't we don't have to worry about that because we can't. And I didn't flip them anyway, so those guys will just stay <laughs> spent. I totally forgot to flip these, so I'm going to flip them now. Okay. All right, so we've done that. That is now... Um, that one is done. We have to do... Did we have another one or was it just that one? Oh, it's this one. Got a three, so that's nothing. All right, so let's resolve this. Let's activate this area and resolve this uh, here. So we've, we've got a, we'll let K be the leader. So we've got four, five, six, seven. They've got six. So it is seven to six. Let's roll for the US. That one, oh my God, we got a two. <laughs> well, this is gonna be a loss. Company K is gonna be out of action. And they get a six to start, and they rolled a ten, so they kicked our butts. And so that is a repulse. And we lose our lead unit, which is K, so he goes over here. And then retreat is required in mandatory to spent and retreat them. Actually, I don't... Yeah, that was mandatory because we were already in a contested area. So we'll just put them there. All right. So this was M, wasn't it? Oh, that's K. Yeah, M is... Oh, there is no M. The, that leader's dead. <laughs> All right. So we don't have rain, so we do have a six this time. So we can move this guy in in here. And then we can move these two in as well to give us a little bit of a better chance. So we've got six, and I'm gonna use both artillery because we're gonna to have to roll against an 11 here. So this is not great, but it is what it is. So we're down by three here. So let's roll, and we got a 10. So 10 is a good number. 10 plus four, five, six is 16. We still need less than a five to actually win. And we got a six. <laughs> All right, well, M will go out of action, and these guys will be spent, and we will retreat them out of there. Then we don't have to worry about bloody streets. Since it was not a mandatory attack. All right. Um, their morale stays up there, and I, even I, I still forgot their plus, their plus one, which hasn't mattered because I lost both times. But, all right, let's see if we can take care of, um, let's see what's here, I guess. Since we're, we're doing so well, let's see what's up here. So we're going to move everybody in here. So G is going, F is going, and our artillery self-propelled Artie is going. So this is a three and a seven barrage. So as we know from prior, barrage means that we have to take an infantry unit out or flip all the units to spent and retreat. So let's do that. So we're going to flip to spent because my supply rolls have been terrible. And I have units sitting in the box already that I need to get out. And I'd like to have some support at some point. So we're just going to do that. Uh, and now we've got D, which I guess I'm not going to even activate. I, I'm, I need to move him up there and I didn't do it. So um, that's the end of that turn. Now we get... Some, now we get some power here. We get a little firepower because we get Hogan and his unit, which is armor. So we've got uh, three companies of tanks here, E, F, and H under Hogan. A five, a five, and a six. So this is actually an APC. It's not, it's not a tank. It's an APC. These are the tanks. So we got our nice little Sherman there and our half tracks, and they're going to be uh, coming in. And we're gonna send them, I think, uh, doesn't really matter, because if we put them here, they can get there. 
if I want to go up against this guy. So we're going to start, we're going to put these guys, uh, actually we should put them here. We should put them there. Um, and in two more turns, I'll get more armor from Hughes, but uh, not yet. All right, uh, we have no dead leaders. Uh, we did our reinforcements. So now we go to random event. We roll our three dice. And we get a 10, and a 10 is none. Holy crap, we got lucky. <laughs> a 10 or 11 is nothing. No event. Awesome. My map is getting all pushed around here. One of the problems with a paper map and nothing on top of it. I don't put stuff on top of it if I can avoid it because of the glare. You can see a little glare over here. And there's some over here as well. Right there. Because my lights are psh, this way. All right. Uh, TMI? Maybe. I don't care. All right. Next, we have our combat. Oh, supply. Supply, supply, supply. How much supply are we going to get? I need, uh, come on, I need, daddy needs a lot of supply. <laughs> we get 10. I'll take it. All right, so this would cost two. We'll throw him in there. These would cost a total of two. So we'll put M. M should go here. And K should go here they can go in there i gotta flip these guys over again too you can put them in any american controlled area so they can go there they'll go there he'll go here actually i could put them here directly i think so we'll do that all right uh bloody streets let's see we have one right there Haran is proving to be a in the butt, but we got a one, so nothing there. All right, so now we're going to do a regular combat. So we're going to move this guy back up. He can join his leader, Fuller. We'll let him be the lead unit. Oh, I had I had six more supply points, man. What am I doing? I need to do that. So armor costs what? Uh, three? Armor costs three. So we'll do one armor for three. And we'll do one artillery for one. And we'll do... Actually, you know what? Let's do an air. Let's do air. We're going to do one air. That costs four. And we'll do two artillery. Then we'll use the other two. So we're going to use some, some air support here. Let's bring in some, uh, some thunderbolts or something and lay down some harm. All right. Uh... Okay, let's go. So I moved those guys there. Uh, or I moved uh, D there. I could also, since this area is activated, I should move this guy as well. So he will go here for two, and then that, that's five. So he's going to move there. Um, and then we'll resolve. We'll move these guys in and resolve that as well. And that's going to that's gonna be a big one. All right. So they they have six plus one is seven. We have four, five, six, seven ourselves. But let's call in the air support. The air support gives us, and here's our air support marker. And I don't think there's anything on. Oh, it does say on the back. So there you can see on the back German uh, DV minus one D six. So we're going to remove. He's only going to get to roll uh, one die. Minus one, no, he rolls, we roll a d6 to see how much we take off of it. That's what it is. All right. I, it's been a while since I've used that particular type of support. Okay, so we're up here. Now we know our number is uh, seven, seven, basically, right? So we're going to roll our Americans here. And we got an eight. So we have 15. So the Americans have 15. The Germans start with seven. So we'll roll for them. And they get a nine. Okay, so they would be winning, but now we roll 1d6 to see how much we take off for our air support. <laughs> you got to be kidding, man. Okay, well, we lost again.
because we rolled a measly one and we were losing by two. So this poor guy gets back to the out of action box and these guys will stay because that was not a mandatory attack. Um, so they can stay there and we'll uh, do bloody streets again. And their morale doesn't move because it's already maxed out. The Germans are riding high here. All right, let's activate this area to go in here. So we're going to send these four up in here. And I'm going to take this guy, and he's going to move here, pending these guys moving in as well. This is the plan. Um, and then I also have Hogan's group that we're going to do something with as well. Uh, three, six. Oh, that's the wrong kind of defender there. Now you see that's a box and I had the um, the hex on there. So we have to take that off and put a square on there. So we do like that. So Hauptbahnhof here is probably going to get Hogan, but we're not going to do that right now. I don't want to put the card ahead of the horse here. So here's our lead unit. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They have ten as well. I have artillery support. We will use one. So we'll give ourselves a one point edge we'll roll oh wait nope it's even because of the plus one that i want to i want to forget that i really really do and we got we got a measly three this is rid <laughs> ridiculous they're gonna roll like a 10 uh seven well it's still they win this goes away again uh we are getting our butts handed to us left and right here. All right, so put that there. Uh, spent, 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 spent. All right, well, we're not revealing any new defenders, so there's no surprises here, at least. Now we're gonna take these guys and move them up in here so that we can do this attack. And let's see, we've got, uh, this is an 11. So he's got an 11. We have six, seven, eight, nine. So it's nine, 11. And I'm going to use my artillery support. Why not? To make it 11, 10. So we need to beat him by two to win the combat. And I'm probably going to roll like a three or something. Hey, I called it. I rolled a three. Now for them, I'm going to roll something high. You watch. An 11. Woo! Yeah, butt kicking. All right, out and flipped. And they don't have to retreat, so we'll leave them there. You know what? They don't have to, but I, I think I want to. All right. Uh, quite honestly, I'm getting fed up with with these terrible die rolls. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna move Hogan in, so he can go three and three is six. So he's got a six to the lead, for the lead unit plus three more is nine. We don't have anything else, so we're we're start we're at a negative two here, and um, I seem to roll like alternate like Americans always terrible, Germans always good. So let's see if we can change that up a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna ditch one of these dot dice too. Let's try this one. Hey, a twelve. Yes. All right. So we got a twelve. So that's a six. Uh, 18, 19, 20, 21. So they have an 11. So they need a 10 to tie and an 11 to win. You gotta be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. That's, oh my God, that is terrible. All right, well. Once again, nothing. Well, let's see if we can continue our run of terrible luck and move in here and try this again. I'm telling you, if the, if the U.S. Army had this kind of luck in the actual Battle of Aachen, World War II might still be going on. Uh, so we got four. We'll use we'll use L. Why not? Four, five, six, seven against six against seven. <laughs> and I think I forgot it there too. Not that it mattered. We lost that. One. So we get an eight, eight plus uh, six. No, seven. Eight plus seven is 15. They have seven as well. And they get a seven. So we got 15 to 14. We finally win. Death goes away. 
They finally lose a morale point. These guys are spent. Like so. And that is the end of the turn. We, uh, let's see. So we get another... So are you wondering what the victory conditions might be? Since we're not going to get to see me win, you might as well see what the victory conditions are. I can explain it to you anyway. Basically, the American can win if he controls the whole map. Pretty obvious. Or, or, if the German morale is five or less, a final die roll is made to determine if the German garrison surrenders. You'd roll a d6 and compare the result to the current German morale. If the result's higher, the German garrison surrenders and the player is the victor. So their morale's 18 and we've got uh, four turns left. So there's no way I'm going to win this game. No way. Um, it's, yeah, there's just, it's, it's, there's no way. I had some really bad die rolls. So I'm, in case you haven't um, realized it, I'm, uh, I'm waving the white flag. I give up. I give up. I give up. I give up. This game has kicked my butt, um, unfortunately. I was hoping I could actually do well, and you could see what it might be like to actually have a successful game. Um, it took me probably four or five times to win the Stalingrad game. <laughs> and uh, Manila... It took me several tries to win a, win a game in that one as well. This is a tough system. Uh, the events, the random events, kick your butt. Um, some of these, like you pull this, and he's already and he's in a an urban area where he gets another three and eleven. I mean, that's that's hard. That's hard. You know, you come in there with a six. If you bring a bunch of other stuff, maybe you can get it. You know, and my supply rolls weren't great and there were some that got halved and it's just it's like disaster piled on top of disaster that's why this game is hard to win so if you like a challenge this is the game for you but that is going to do it for this one um yeah i'm frustrated and maybe i'll have some luck with some better luck with something else anyway um no in all seriousness i love this system it is extremely difficult to win at though uh so there we go uh obviously i made mistakes i think i caught most of them but i'm sure something probably could slip through the cracks uh so as always you know if you've got something to say you know where to put it put it in the <laughs> i don't mean that the way it sounds put it in the comments and i will do my best to get back to you on it um but that's going to do it for now uh please consider subscribing and, uh, you know, click on the old bell so you get notifications when something new is posted. Uh, at the very least, I hope you would like and or share the video. Um, and if all else fails, at least uh, think about coming back and watching something else down the road. That's the best I can hope for. So that will do it. My name's Joe. This is the Hexed Encounter Channel. This is Solitaire Sunday. And until next time, as always, happy gaming.